guys. Like we promised, we're in a new space today because we are doing a new series. This series is called Meals with Jesus. As you can see, we are in a kitchen space um, and we'll be making meals of our own. So this series is about Jesus and how he had different meals with different people as he walked here on earth. Um, in these lessons, we're going to learn a little bit about what Jesus did, what we can learn from him and how we can act based on what we know about his interactions. So what are we making today, Antone? Well, today we are making English muffin pizzas. So we've got some English muffins here and they're cut open and we've got some sun-dried tomato pesto, which is going to be our pizza sauce. Mm. Very quick and simple. We've got some uh, chorizo. It looks pretty spicy, but you can put any meaty thing or like veggies, anything you want, you can yeah. put on your pizza. And then to top it off, we've got mozzarella cheese. Yummy. So we'll be making this as you guys watch the video, we'll be cooking some food and then stick around to the end to see the finished product. Yummy. But first, before we get into everything, let us play a game. So we're gonna go into the game and we'll get started over here. Enjoy. Hey kids, we'll be playing a game today called Simon Says. Now remember the rules. First, you have to get up off your feet and play with us. If I say Simon Says, then you go ahead and do the action that I tell you. But if I don't say Simon Says, keep still and don't do the actions. Okay, let's try it out. Simon says, put your hands on your head. Simon says, put one hand down. Turn around. I hope you didn't turn around. Let's try another round. Simon says, clap your hands. Simon says, stop clapping your hands. Simon says, stomp one foot. Stop stomping your foot. If you stop stomping your foot, then you're out. Don't worry, we'll do one more. Simon says, turn around. Simon says, sit down. Simon says, stand up. Sit down again. That was the last round. I hope you did not sit down for that. That was such a cool game. I had so much fun and we hope that you did too. Now, while we're busy cooking here, we're gonna also get ready for time to worship. Now, all of this is so much fun, but the most important part about these videos, while why we are here, is to worship God and to learn more about Him. So in this song, we want you to stand up, sing along, or just listen to the words and praise God from your heart. When there's an ocean of doubt in front of me, and my back's up against the wall I know it's an opportunity For my God to show His heart And it may look impossible in the natural But I know that it's not Cause I know that my God will come
share with you um, some food for thought. So the other day, I forgot to have breakfast. Bad idea. But I thought I can get something else to give me the energy that I need because I was feeling a little bit weak. So I grabbed one of these. This is an energy drink. And although it worked for the moment, it gave me a boost of energy. As the day progressed, it began to fade and I felt hungry as well as low on energy. So it gave me what I needed right then. But as time progressed, uh, it failed a little bit. So what I was thinking is I should have grabbed something to eat, maybe an apple or banana that would have sustained me, keep, kept me full, as well as gave me the energy I needed. This makes me think about sometimes how we treat prayer. It's great when in the moment you're feeling weak or tired or stressed about something to talk to God and pray to him in the moment and say, God, I'm facing a crisis, please help me. But what's even better is to get something more sustainable, taking time every day to talk to God. That is like the food we eat and not necessarily just a quick energy drink. So sometimes we need something to boost our energy um, in prayer where we have a crisis and we pray. But sometimes it's better to just take time every day and build a long term relationship with God. So let's remember that this week. Take time to spend time with Jesus in prayer and in just getting to know him and sitting with him. I hope this was helpful. We'll see you next time. Wow, wasn't that amazing? That's great food for thought, right? Yeah. But before we get into today's message, let's just take some time to pause and be present and focus on God. As we pause and breathe, let's think about how selfless and generous Jesus was. The Bible tells us that Jesus did not see being equal with God as something to boast or brag about, but He was humbled enough to die a shameful death so that we could be close to God again. Let's thank Jesus for this now. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that even though you are God and you are the most important ever, that you put us first by dying on the cross for our sin. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for being generous and thank you for being selfless. Jesus, we pray that this truth, that you will change our hearts as well to be kind and selfless and generous to people around us. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 14, verses 8 to 11. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Welcome, come on in, come in. Come into my house, thanks for coming. We're gonna have a Brian a moment 
It's gonna be cool. Oh, you like my house? Yeah, it's quite nice, eh? Let me let me take a photo of myself in front of my house for my Instagram uh, profile. Actually, that's not even my house. That's actually just my games room. That's my pool table, my table tennis, my air hockey, my foosball, and my darts, which if you like, I'll show you how to do it because I'm really good at all of those uh, a little bit later. But in the meantime, settle down, come on in. Make yourself at home, my home, your home. It's all nice. You're welcome, eh? Actually, I must say, I, you know, talking about posting things, I, I'm, I'm becoming a little bit of like a, an influencer. Uh, in this um, Christian community in, in our church. So I really would appreciate it if you guys would go onto my profile on Instagram and what's it, that new one I'm trying to get onto, uh, Tok Toki. Um, wouldn't you just go on there and give me some likes, eh? Because I really like likes from cool people like you guys. That's kind of why I invited you over. And uh, yeah, not, not so hot on the not so cool people, but um, yeah, you know, I'm like, I'm quite a, I'm thinking of getting into this influencer thing, you know, because I'm I'm quite a good guy, uh, got it all together as you can see, and uh, and actually I'm quite an athlete. I don't know if you know that about me, but I'm actually I'm quite quite like a, a super runner and I'm quite ripped, eh? So um, I can't take a photo of myself, guys. At the back, can can you help me with this one? I'm just gonna take a photo of myself here. Yeah, and uh, I'll put that on my profile. You can uh, you can like it because I'm I can give you some coaching advice as to how to get fit, you know. Uh, fit, fit in the gospel, all this cross trainer thing we were doing. But, um, yeah, no, that's not me. Have you ever been to a house and, uh, or somebody, some, been with somebody, maybe it's even just somebody at school, and they, you just feel it's like all about them. It's like, wow, man, it's like, can't you think of anything else other than just how good you look and trying to make yourself look good in front of other people? And, uh, but that's, that's a, the story that we were hearing this morning. Jesus came to this Pharisee's house. He got invited to lunch. Do you think that he was invited there because they really wanted to have him there to like feed him a nice meal or, or learn from Jesus? Actually, the Bible suggests otherwise. In, in verse, uh, I don't know if you picked it up. In verse uh, 1, it says uh, they went to dine with the house of the ruler of the Pharisees. So this was like the top-notch guy. He was the cool guy of the cool guys. Um, and they were watching him carefully, watching him. Does that mean they were trying to learn from him? No, they were, they were trying to trick him. They were trying to find out some way that they were, he was going to do things wrong. Because this was the Sabbath. And actually talks about like a, if you if you heard or you can go and read about the story of how he actually healed on the Sabbath, and they were trying to trick him into doing something that was religiously wrong, and the Pharisees, you see, that is what they did. They also wanted to be influencers. They wanted to be the religious influencers of the day, and the way that they did that was by showing how well they kept the rules. They wanted to prove to everybody that they could keep the rules better than anybody. So what did they do? They made sure that they followed everything. But in doing that, what they would actually do is they would not only sort of look, make sure that they looked good, but they would push others down and point out other people's mistakes and errors and how bad they were. Just like they're trying to do to Jesus here. Like, who's this new guy coming on the block and he's got so many f followers <laughs> and likes, but like, we're gonna show you that he actually doesn't know what he's doing. And this is what the Pharisees were actually doing. And Jesus notices this, and he challenges them. He challenges them about this, this attitude of pride and wanting to make yourself look good in front of others. And he, he, he challenges them not only in what he does by loving the people around him, the, he heals the man, but he, he challenges them and speaks into their hearts. And you know that they, he's speaking to them and speaking to their hearts because the room goes quiet. It says they all went silent and they started listening to him, which I think is always a good sign. But um, so the first thing that he does is he talks to them about humility. We'll get into the word in a moment. And he gives us an example. He says, when I came in here, what I noticed was the, the ruler of the, the Pharisee, the host, the, the guy in charge, he always sits up at the, at the head of the house and all of his main mana friends, went and sat next to him, right? They're like a, a clique. Do you, do you still use that word in school? You know, like uh, a bunch of guys all 
um, went and sat together and they take all the, the best seats in the house right up close next to the host. Whereas he, who was sort of a invited guest, was now sitting down at the bottom of the table where, well, the, the other people got to sit. And he said to them, you know, this is, this is not a good attitude because uh, when you come in, all that can happen if you sit in one of those private uh, prime seats and so on, is that when somebody more honored than you comes in, they could ask to take your seat, and by then all the seats will be filled, and you'll be asked to go and sit right at the bottom, and everybody will notice how you get up and leave and walk down. And that would be really embarrassing. So even on a practical level, he's, he starts off by giving this story to them, just in terms of where you should sit, as a, as a piece of practical advice around managing uh, you know, how you, how you appear in front of other people. He goes deeper, and I'll come back to that in a moment. But what, what I wanted to, to say this is, is that um, the Pharisees were trying to not only puff them up, themselves up in front of other people, but also thinking that they could impress God by doing this. And actually, God is saying, in, in this attitude of of making yourself look good, of trying to be like a influencer and have big muscles. <laughs> Actually, you're not impressing God because God looks at our hearts. God looks at our attitude towards other people. And that is where um, you can actually uh, tell how we love God by how we love other people. So in a way, our internal attitudes shapes our behaviors and how we sh we uh, behave towards other people. But likewise, the way in which we behave towards other people can show us our attitudes and how our hearts look inside. So I've also heard it said in terms of humility, that humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself as God thinks of you or sees you. Let me say that again. It's not thinking less of yourself, not pushing yourself down, going, oh no, I'm not that good, but rather seeing yourself as God sees you. That's quite challenging. It's quite a good way to think about it. I was thinking, going, mm, how does God see me? Well, I'm a sinner. I, I've done things wrong plenty of times. In, in fact, this morning I was selfish, but I'm saved by grace. And although I can do good things, and I have some abilities, and so on. Those are all things that God has given me. So they're actually not mine to show off about. They're actually God's to share. Hmm. Maybe that should change the way in which I behave towards other people. So that's the humility that Jesus is encouraging. But actually, we didn't read it in the verse uh, that was read earlier. But if you go just a little bit further, not only does Jesus challenge uh, the guests that are coming into a feast, but he takes the situation a little bit further and he digs into you know, the, the Pharisees just to expand this point of puffing yourself up and gives them a great tool to be able to deal with the pride in their hearts. So Jesus, I love this. I mean, he's come into, in effect, his enemy's house, right? He's, he's coming into the house of the Pharisees, which he know oh, he's going to be under scrutiny and looked at. But he's actually still trying to love them. He's still trying to help them out of their pride. And if you go and look at it, I'm not going to go into all the detail, verse 12 and 13, he says, when you are hosting a party, don't invite your friends and your mates, you know, all the people that are going to make you look good, like in my example earlier, just come so long as you're going to give me likes. But invite the people that can't give you anything in return, that can't invite you back to their house, can't give you any likes on Instagram or Tok <laughs> But, um, uh, you know, people that have actually no way of repaying your, your kindness. Uh, and he, he says, inv invite the, you know, the, the poor, the, the disabled, the blind into your house. So this is uh, just a, a quick tool in terms of how to break down pride in our lives. Give away generously without being able to expect anything in return. <laughs> One way that I've um, applied this, uh, I sort of heard the... the idea of sort of random acts of kindness was um, uh, when you go to a parking uh, at the mall and so on, 
I drive a car, but maybe this is with your parents. Um, you pay for your parking, it's always like an eight rand or something weird. And uh, so you put in a 10 rand note and out comes your change, right? So sometimes rather than taking that change, I intentionally just, just leave it in the tray. And I always imagine somebody else who's having a, maybe a hard day or um, whatever it is, just coming past and finding like some extra coins and going, hey, my lucky day, and putting a smile on their face. And they have no way of repaying me for my kindness. Uh, I don't know if it's ever worked actually, um, but I always imagine that somebody's just had a bit of a smile. Maybe it's a poor person, maybe it's a security guard who's walking past and checking and sees some extra coins. Hopefully it just puts a smile on somebody's face. Maybe another way to apply um, sort of the rules of, of humility and putting other people first. Uh, as I was driving into the church, maybe you can t challenge your, your parents on this, is do I take the, the parking place closest to the door or do I park furthest from the door just to allow other people to have the better parking places? And likewise in school, think about how you can benefit and give to other people. Maybe it's sharing some lunch with somebody else or doing something kind for somebody without them even knowing that you did it. That's what Jesus is talking about that shows the attitude of our hearts in giving and being able to break down pride in our lives and being able to give of others. Have a look with me just in closing at verse 11, the last verse that we read. It says, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. What does that mean? Well, everyone who exalts himself, who puffs himself up here on earth, will be humbled. When you get to the judgment and you get in front of Jesus, you're going to realize you are so insignificant. You really are not such a big cheese after all. In fact, God judges our heart and we'll see how small our heart is. But he who humbles himself, if we've seen ourselves as God sees us and given to other people, well, they will be exalted. Actually, it says a little bit further in verse 15 that there's going to be a, a, a meal in heaven. Actually, there's going to be lots of feasts. I believe. And it says, blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. And I just imagine that the same rule that Jesus has just taught the Pharisees here and us is quite possibly will happen in heaven, that people who are humble will take the lower seats in the feast in heaven. And God will say, no, no, come move up, come sit closer to me, I want to talk to you. So as we close off, would you just remember the simple lesson that Jesus taught us about being humble in the way that we live our lives. Let our love shine in the way that we deal with other people. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for the simple lesson. Thank you that even though it was uncomfortable for you, that you were willing to go into a place with these Pharisees and didn't leave them there or, or just uh, think bad thoughts, but tried to help them in their pride. And please would you, by your Holy Spirit, remind us when we are doing something to puff ourselves up or look good, may we also be able to live in a way that we have an accurate um, view of who we are in front of you and that that would help us to be humble in the way we treat other people. Amen. God bless. Well, that's it for today. Our food is ready. I'm so excited to eat my English muffin pizza. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really hope that you have enjoyed the lesson and just enjoyed getting to know Jesus better. We hope to see you next week. And while we eat our food, check out the challenge of the week.